<clears throat> Hello and welcome to today's video. Made some progress over the weekend and uh, didn't get a chance on Sunday to make a video because it was late. So here's the video for today, Monday. Uh, quick little recap, I've got the BMS hooked up uh, with my extra cable that I've got. I've spliced out cells, uh, you can see it down in there. I've spliced out cells number 93, 94, and 95. Um, they're hooked up to my uh, lithium ion battery cell simulator thing here. It's just the uh, four isolated supplies that variable between uh, 2 and 4.6 volts, and then with a little 20 turn pot, I can change it. I've got the uh, voltmeter on there putting out 4.0 volts, or I guess 3.99 volts, <laughs> toggling between the two. Uh, I still got a CAN bus hooked up, and I've got a serial uh, cable here. It's hooked up to the receive line on the microcontroller, and uh, so I can sniff the uh, communications between the battery management little um, balancing chips uh, that measure the cell voltages and do the balancing. So that serial cable runs along over here, so CAN bus comes out of that connector back there. Serial cable gets plugged in over here and goes to the DMOC adapter, which is running code to simply um, collect all the data and ship it over Wi-Fi to my browser. And um, I've covered this in previous videos, but uh, you can see um, cell number 96 is sitting there at 4.07, 4.012, and toggling back and forth. And uh, the new stuff is, of course, you can kind of already see on the screen here, let me scroll down, is I'm now decoding the um, packets back that come from the battery management chips, the BMS chips that do the cell reading, and uh, going to the microcontroller and got it mostly decoded. There's still a few um, bytes. I don't know what they do yet, but um, getting the cell voltages. And if we go down here to cell number 96, you can see it's flipping between 4.0013 and 4.08. Um, I just, I guess just a, a quick little recap here. Um, the data that contains all the cell information well, I guess I can go through it. So we have that 55, which is that sync byte, and then this is the actual address bytes here. Now, I don't know what the leading bits do mean. If you look here, I've got it listed as unknown, so it goes 6200640. So there's not like any kind of pattern, but the last five bits of that byte are definitely the address. So you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it's nice. It goes all the way to 18. This is in hex. You can see the A. Um, that's essentially 1 through 24 in hex. And then the next byte over here is this F2, which is common to everybody, which I'm assuming is a read command. It's telling it's read. Um, what I thought was pad bytes, these 0, 0, are not. They're some kind of flags. Uh, you can see right there that one just flipped to F. It seems, and this one down here flipped to 5. And it seems to do that every once in a while. I'm not quite sure if it's doing some kind of internal calibration but eventually they go away. See, they're all now zero again. So it's odd. I'm not quite sure exactly what they do. I do know that the higher upper bit, see now this one just went to two, so it's busy doing something. Um, the upper uh, byte definitely changes if I go above. So I think this one's were like interrupts, uh, or not interrupts, but like flags that say, hey, something's horribly wrong. Because if I turn one of these voltages up really high, then those flags get set, and such that if I turn up all four of them, I end up with the upper one being an F. So I'm pretty sure that, see right now, they're all busy doing stuff. A, F, F. I'm not quite sure what that does yet. And it might be something that's actually being commanded down here. I haven't decoded the actual command packets that go out, but uh, they're definitely not zero all the time. Um, let's see what's next. Uh, so then we get into the actual voltages of the uh, thing, which I'll cover here in a little bit. This convert, um, I originally was calling it even odd. It's very important. <laughs> and then uh, at the end here we have this count, which just, if you look the values just increment, I think that's just the 16-bit um, timer that just counts up. And it's essentially applying a timestamp as it goes through, because each one's always later. 
because I think that's just whenever the conversion, when it did all four conversions. Um, I'm pretty sure that down here it's telling it to convert because you can see how it toggles between two values. And um, that's exactly what the uh, actual uh, cell data values do. So if you look here, there's five bytes. So that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one are the five bytes. One, two, three, four, five. That encode the cell data. It's um, 10 bits, and they're packed. So essentially what that means is um, the eight bits here, that's the lower eight bits, and then the next part here, the next uh, byte over, the upper two bits are the um, part of that guy, the cell one data. The remaining six bits are the next cell, which then leaves this four as the upper, and then that leaves a four, and then six, and then two, and then the remainder, right? The last eight. So the interesting thing is, you see how they're toggling back and forth? They're actually got a sign bit on them. So it's actually, it's 10 bits, but it's nine bits signed. Well, 10 bits, but the 10th bit is the sign bit. And you might be wondering, why is there a signed bit when, you know, it's only ever going to be zero to... Oh, the maximum value, by the way, was um, 4.54, I believe. Or four, yeah, 4.545 is what it goes to when it's all F. When it's FFF. <clears throat> or I guess 1, one F, where the upper bit... No, it would be 3F, but the upper bit is the sign. But anyways... Um, it is returning a signed value, which seems really bizarre until you realize that they are actually looking at the cell differentially. So, that little convert here, where I've listed it as where it says 4 and 8, is actually, uh, before I did that, I was actually calling it even and odd. What they're doing is, one of these commands tells it to sample, and it measures the battery this way, right? And then next conversion, it measures it this way. And the next conversion, it measures it this way. So it sits there and alternates between the two. And that removes any kind of built-in offset or null that would be happening in the front end. So they've, they've definitely got a fully differential front end. And they're definitely reading it fully differentially. And you can see, like, over here how the value is different every other time. And what they do is they must be they're averaging those two values together and getting an extra bit, a pseudo bit, as you will, when they sent it over CAN. So that's an interesting thing. Um, <laughs> they're definitely doing they're definitely doing some kind of trick like that. But I figured it out when I was able to break it out, and it's like because none of these values are the same every time, but somehow the value over here was staying really constant, and it turns out that they're doing that differentially. Now they might also have two A to D converters. For each cell, one hooked up one direction, the other one hooked up the other direction, so that if any converter fails, they'll have a double check. But I highly doubt it. My guess is they got a differential front end going into one sigma 10 bit sigma delta converter, and it's just doing the front end is flipping every other time so they can get rid of any front end nulling issues that they have, any kind of um, built in offset or leakage current kind of a deal. That way it would show up on one, but it would be backwards on the other, and they can null it out. So it's actually pretty smart. I, it might the two ADD converters might be there if they're trying to do redundancy, but I highly doubt it because that would be expensive to have, you know, eight converters per four cells. So my guess is they've got a di fully differential front end that they can flip. Um, so that's pretty much everything going on there. Um, I guess I can show. Um, uh, let me see if I can do this with one hand. I come over here, we're reading 4 volts, um, well it was flipping around, yeah, 3.99. So like I was saying about the flag, let me, uh, I have this little thing here because I can get it in here with, that, with one hand here. And we'll, um, let's see if I can get that on the screen, we'll crank this up. Uh, this is really hard to do with just one hand. I should have put something really heavy. So if I get above... 4. Point, I think it's around 4.5 volts. That's when that 
lag occurs. So we'll just crank it up to almost. Yeah, this is probably boring. I can't find, there we go. So we'll just crank it all the way up here. All right, 4.52, right? If we come over here to our uh, voltage for our cell, 4.53-ish, 4.52, so it's flipping around in there. And if we come over here, we'll see that we now have flag set um, for that bit, for that uh, number eight, which is the, which makes sense because I turned up cell number 96. So if I were to go turn up all these other ones really high, then it sets those flags there as well. Um, so, you know, if I turned up, uh, let's see, cell number 95 would end up with C. But uh, yeah, so it's doing something there, some kind of emergency shutdown. Um, all the other ones are still zero, but that one's the one that's saying, hey, something's gone horribly wrong, better shut down. So I think that at the beginning of the pack, it just tells the um, microcontroller to go open up the contactors because, you know, this guy's gone nuts. Um, I think it does the same thing if I turn one really low. It might also set a bit. I'm not sure. I have to verify that. But um, anyways, this video is pretty long. But... Uh, that's what's going on in there. Um, I guess uh, you can stop watching now if you want, but I can, I can, this is really hard to turn down, but let's like turn down number um, 93 here. I'll just go through and real quick and just kind of mess them all up, show that, yeah, we are actually reading all of these independently. Uh, let's turn that guy down too, turn it down a little bit. I think I had them all just sitting at around four. So one of the things I need to investigate as well is, um, well, let's leave 95 alone, is what happens when they're really high, do they, does it do some kind of balancing? You can see I still only have the one fault there. But I turned this guy down to 3.8 volts. This one tur got turned down to 3.671. That one's still sitting around four volts. And uh, let's look at cell number 93 says it's 3.808 volts. So we can come over here and actually measure it. Uh, what did I say? 3.83. I remember I'll have to go look. I'll go ahead and hook this guy up. 3.8057-ish. And then what was it? So yeah, 3.80, 3.808, yeah, so it's pretty close, um, 3.675, so they're, they're amazingly close, I mean, if, if you trust my meter. <laughs> But um, they're all they're all really 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 close within a millivolt. So I'm pretty sure I've got the scaling and everything's all set up right. Um, like I said, I turned the one up to uh, until I pegged it. Yep, oh, the meter says it needs to turn off. But um, yeah, I pegged it up at 4.545, which is what I used to set the scale for FFFF. And uh, it seems to be working pretty good. Um, there's still a few bytes that I don't know what they do. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what some of those flags mean. Uh, there's also, in here, there's this, um, the, these guys right here, A9, 95, 21. Because they're flipping, I'm guessing they're part of the uh, measurement system. And my guess, I haven't confirmed it yet, but my guess is this is encoding the entire pack, well, like the stack of the four cells, maybe. Because that's the only thing I can think of that it would have access to. It's either that or it's some kind of calibration value but it doesn't look like it because they kind of vary all throughout. They're all kind of different. So even this, like where it's 21, but this one's 22. So you can definitely tell that one of the bits here where this zero is rolled over because these ones are really close. 
So yeah, here's another one. See where it says 05. So it's rolled over. So there's definitely some kind of same kind of a packing deal. So I need to decode that out, figure out what that is. It, my guess is it's probably the total pack stack, like the four cells in series, and it measures it as a sanity check. Um, so if it lost one of these converters, maybe it would be able to figure that out that way. But uh, still need some investigation, <laughs> and of course you need to figure out what these commands down here do. Um, progress is being made though, and uh, yeah, I think uh, not too uh, not too shabby. Once we get all that worked out, then I'm going to go ahead and replace their microcontroller with my microcontroller, and um, hopefully once I know what all those commands are, I can send them and then command this directly. We'll pull out the um, chips we don't need or just bypass them and uh, be able to configure this from a 48 volt or 48 module to a 40 module to series strings of 20 in parallel to put in the old uh, the truck. So anyways, that was a really long video. If you waited all the way to the end, thanks for watching. Bye.